Uh, hello viewers, uh, welcome back to another episode of Moose Mobile uh, Auto Repair and today I have this 2010 Toyota Corolla. It has a misfiring problem and it has trouble code P0301 stored in the computer. Today I'm going to show you on how to diagnose that. So earlier today I was uh, driving in town and then all of a sudden the, uh, th the engine was uh, losing power and I, I was not able to accelerate. It's, uh, it was a very uh, dangerous situation because if you're if you're making a left turn or if you're turning right the vehicle was hesitating when I was hitting the accelerator and so I'm not able to go very fast with this uh, misfire I probably could go no faster than like 60 kilometers an hour so it was a it's a big uh, safety hazard if you're driving on the road and there's a lot of traffic. So now I'm gonna go uh, under the hood and show you on, uh, on how to diagnose uh, this uh, misfire uh, issue. So right now I have the check engine light, it's flashing, I'm idling right now and uh, the traction control light is on and the VSC for the vehicle <laughs> stability control is also on and so the check engine light is, uh, is still flashing. And this vehicle has uh, 171,527 kilometers on it. So if you see that the check engine light is flashing, that means that you have a misfire. And that also means that uh, there's a possibility that, that you could damage the catalytic uh, uh, converter if you keep driving that way and this means that the EPA standard has exceeded 1.5 times the <laughs> the limit and so it, it's not advisable to keep driving the vehicle until the issue is fixed so uh, I'm underneath the hood now I just need to remove the the engine cover and uh, I don't have uh, uh, all of my tools on me at the moment. I just have this uh, Husky uh, 10 millimeter hex. So right now I just undo the, the bolts. And, and just to let you guys know, if you don't know where cylinder one is it would be beside closest and beside the timing chain the timing chain it would be over here so this is cylinder one two three and four so uh, i'm gonna swap the coils number one with number two Reinstall the bolts back.
and reinstall the uh, connector. And reinstall the cover. So now I'm going back to the blue driver scan tool. I already swapped the coils now from uh, I've already swapped the coils from cylinder one to cylinder two. So so now we are going to clear the codes and see if the misfire moves from cylinder one to cylinder two. If the misfire moves to cylinder two, then we know we have an ignition coil problem. So I'm gonna go to read codes again. Okay, P0301, so we're gonna clear it. And then now we're going to start the engine and then uh, and see if the misfire uh, comes back. You want to make sure that uh, that you clear the codes first before you restart the vehicle and go for a road test. So now I go back to the scan tool and now we see that there is P0302, the cylinder moved now. So now we can definitely say that we have a bad ignition coil and so uh, th that is going to conclude the diagnosis so now that we know that we swapped with coil number one t to coil number two the misfire moved to cylinder number two so now we know that the ignition coil uh, is the problem now the the reason why we have a misfire is because there is either an ignition fuel or a, a mechanical problem now it's also possible to have a a bad computer pcm powertrain control module or ecm engine control module and uh, it's also possible to have s some other e electrical problem, such as bad wires <laughs> and other things. But we're not going to talk about that uh, today. So uh, now if you don't want to do the coil swap test, there is another test that you can do. You can do the, the unplugging test and see if there is a change in the engine. So say, so say that cylinder one is the bad cylinder. So if I unplug that and there's no change, it is as if I haven't unplugged or, or touched anything. So that will be the one with the bad coil. So uh, I'm going to show you on how that test works. And this will also work for other things such as fuel injectors if there's access in the engine and you're able to unplug it. So with the engine running you can unplug uh, the ignition coil uh, uh, one at a time and see if there's any change in the engine. I unplug this, there's no change. Now I'm going to do cylinder number two. And there's a change. Number Uh, 
I go back to number one. There's nothing there. So this, uh, 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 this one w w would be the bad ignition coil. So as you saw there, as I unplugged the number one ignition coil, there was no change in the sound or the note of the engine. No change uh, in the RPMs. But as I unplugged either number two or the number three or the number four, there was a, a drastic change uh, in the engine. So I know that those ignition coils are working properly. So I know that the number one ignition coil is no good. Now realize that this is only going to work if the ignition coil is, is really bad or is it's a completely dead miss. This test may not work for an intermittent or slightly failing ignition coils so now I have the new coil here I'm just gonna put a little bit of uh, <laughs> the dielectric grease on the boot here and you can put some on the e e e electrical uh, connector here There's a new coil. Install the bolt. I'm using uh, the the super lube stuff. Install the connector. Make sure everything is in. So uh, after you're done installing the ignition coils you can uh, <laughs> clear the codes and then you should be uh, <laughs> all good to go. And now there's no more misfires. The vehicle is running a lot uh, smoother now. Now, uh, I recently replaced the spark plugs on this engine, so the spark plugs are okay. But if you're having a, uh, a misfiring problem, you, you probably want to change uh, all the spark plugs, including the defective coil. If you learned something and you found this video helpful, please like. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day and take care. How does the engine know that there is a misfire? Well, the computer watches the CKP crankshaft position sensor and so it sees the the variations as the engine is spinning so uh, the computer w w will pick up the the variations uh, in the RPM and it will know on what cylinder it, or cylinders it, uh, are misfiring
Now there will be some uh, instances in which the computer will store a trouble code or more than one trouble code for multiple uh, misfires. And so there are some times that y you cannot trust the uh, computer. So you will need to clear the codes and go for a road test again and see on what cylinders show up that are misfiring.